Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. In my 3D sketch tutorial, I received a question from Alexander Shukin, who says, nice video, thanks. By the way, what is the difference between extrude and press pull commands in Fusion? It seems the result is the same. All right, that's a good question, and it's one I've received a handful of times. So let's jump into Fusion, and we'll quickly go over what the difference is between the extrude and press pull commands. Um, because it can get a little bit confusing because they do overlap in functions. I'm going to create a sketch on the XY plane and I'll throw in a two point rectangle and then I'll click stop sketch, grab my extrude tool from the create menu or simply hit E on your keyboard, select my profile, drag this up, click OK and that's our extrude tool, right? It's straightforward. Uh, we're all familiar with it. It does one thing and does it really well. It's a way of taking our 2D sketches and turning them into 3D objects. Okay, now let's talk about the press pull tool because this is where things get interesting. So in summary, the press pull tool is actually three tools built into one. And depending on what you select will determine what you get. Those three tools are either the extrude tool, like we just saw, the fillet tool, and the offset faces tool. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to undo what I just did here with the extrude. And let's grab the press pull tool from the modify menu. We can go down to press pull, hit Q on your keyboard. Our third option is right click and just grabbing it from the context menu here on the right corner. Now, notice that this box says press pull. If I select my profile here, that automatically changed to extrude. So that tells you if you uh, grab the press pull tool and you select the sketch profile, you're basically getting the extrude tool, right? So we'll take this, drag it up, click OK, and look at our timeline and we see we have the extrude feature. So whether you hit press pull or you grab the extrude tool, when you're selecting uh, the sketch uh, profile, you're getting the same thing. Okay, next let's see what else we have. So we'll select press pull again, and this time I'm gonna grab this edge. And notice now it turned from press pull to fillet. And I can take my arrow, drag it in, and I have a fillet. I'll click OK. Look in our timeline, we have the fillet feature. So it'd be the same thing if I go to modify fillet or I click F on my keyboard. And the third thing I mentioned is the offset faces uh, tool. And to do that, I can grab any face. So if I select a face, notice it says press pull. I'm gonna select a face and now it says offset faces. Uh, I'm going to select modify existing feature here. Uh, select my face again. And when I do this, it's basically as if I'm just, you know, modifying the fillet. I'm giving it a different radius and then I'm going to click OK. And notice no new feature was added there because it was basically as if I just went in and modified that fillet. OK, let's play with that a little more because there's a few interesting things here. I'm going to grab the press pull tool and this time I'm going to select that same face. But instead of selecting modify existing feature, I'm going to choose new offset. OK, now watch what happens if I take this arrow and go up everything grows. So all the other faces will grow with this face. All right, I got a few more interesting things. Uh, if I click OK here, notice I now, this time I actually get a new timeline element there. There's a new feature. It's the offset faces feature. Okay, so when you select, uh, let's grab that face again. When you select modify existing feature, you don't get a new timeline feature there. You, you'll, it's just as if you double click to modify that feature. When you click on new offset, then you're going to get the offset face feature on the timeline. Okay, let's cancel out, out of that and I'm going to select it again. This time, let's select the back face here. And I'm going to go with new offset here. And I'm going to drag this out, click OK. I have a new feature. All right, I'm going to right click, press pull, grab this face, and I'm going to hold control and also grab this face. Two faces there now. If I select new offset, both faces move and the object will move proportionate to my arrow. So just some interesting things to do there. And I can continue selecting more faces here and scale everything, or I can go back to 
just the one face here and just move that. Okay, so let's do a few more things. I'm gonna create another sketch here. Uh, we'll grab our XY plane again. Uh, I'll grab a circle and another circle. Uh, stop sketch, let's grab our press pull tool, grab this outer uh, profile here and then I'll click OK. All right, now if I wanna change the surface here and I try to hit extrude, I, I can't select it. It just It's not going to select the curved face. It'll select the flat face, you see a highlight, but not the curved face. So if I select press pull, I can then select this face and I can modify it. So I can bring it out, bring it in, uh, click OK. And I can do the same thing with that inner uh, circle there and modify the circle. So it's a quick way to modify curved surfaces when you have holes like these or cylinders that you'd like to modify. Uh, here's another thing you can do with the press pull. So in my uh, Wonder Woman tiara course, I use this option where I'll create another sketch here and I'm just gonna grab uh, the spline tool and I'm gonna create just a curve here. And we'll, let's go ahead and offset that uh, curve and then I'm just gonna simply close these off with the line tool just to give me this curved profile here and I'll click stop sketch uh, Q for press pull I'm gonna extrude this it's gonna basically behave as the extrude tool and if I want to thicken this uh, there's another shortcut I can do I can simply uh, grab my press pull tool, grab this uh, curved face here now I can drag this arrow and make it thicker all right, I can do the same thing if I want to thicken the inside part of it. I can bring it out and thicken that as well. So a quick way to thicken a curved surface. Uh, I'll show you one more example here. I'll uh, grab the XY plane again and let's let's just draw like a triangle here. You know, I'll stop sketch and let's press pull this up or extrude this up. Same thing and if I for example want to extrude this face but I want to have it so that these lines continue uh, parallel now if I grab extrude I basically get this you know kind of looks like a house here right uh, um, I, these that extrusion just goes uh, basically it takes these lines and it's going straight out it's not following this face all right, let's escape out of that and let's grab the press pull tool instead and then drag out. Notice how those lines stay consistent and it'll actually extend those faces out while growing this face. Um, so that's uh, basically it. I'll stop there, but I think I've given you enough to kind of see the difference between press pull and extrude uh, yes in the one sense that uh, they both extrude but you have a lot more flexibility uh, with the press pull tool you get to do a little bit more and it's nice to have uh, those tools in your pocket when you need them when you for example you know want to extend this out or you want to thicken a curved surface uh, there's really complicated ways to go about those or you can just simply grab your press pull tool and thicken them so all right guys i want to keep this video short but hopefully i gave you something useful there uh, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below uh, thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you want more videos like this and visit my website at desktopmix.com if you want to dive deeper into fusion 360 with some actual very structured very good video courses.